Okay, so this is lesson one of learning Fusion 360. We have um, an opportunity to basically draw whatever you want. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details of the window uh, beforehand. I want to get right into the drawing. So our first lesson is going to be drawing a cube. So on the top left here, we have uh, a little green plus, and that's going to start um, a new sketch. And in the beginning, it's untitled. So if you open up the origin, these are going to be play buttons if you want. And it's, we're going to call this a browser because that word is right here. Uh, we also are going to have a timeline on the bottom and we have uh, a cube for changing the views over here. So if you were to turn on the origin, if it was off by turning the eyeball on and off, uh, you would be able to interact. So if you see that I'm hovering over the green and red plane, you can see over here that it's going to be the X, uh, Y, and that's for each one of them. So now it's not incredibly important, but typically we want to start on the X, Y. Okay, so for this task, we're going to draw a cube. And so I go over to the create side of the toolbar and I'm looking for the rectangle tool. Over here, we get a choice of three. I like to use the center one and then we click on it and we drag. So this is where we're going to take our hand off our mouse and we're going to hit the tab button just to go back and forth. And you can see that where it turns blue, that is what we can change. So if we want to print this out, we probably want to keep it fairly small. So 30 by 30 would be a good size or 40 by 40. Okay, so now it's sometimes better to turn the origin off. You can even close it so that you can get a pretty good idea of what you've got here. Now, if you forget to put in the dimensions, you can always put them in later and I'll probably show you that version as well. At this point, we're gonna finish our sketch. Now, sometimes it'll turn to the side. Sometimes you have to go up to the top right and press the house button. And then you get kind of a sideways view of it. To extrude it, you're going to go to the top left and you're going to uh, press the extrude button. You've got a little panel here that you can move around and it's going to give you some options. So the first option we're going to take is dragging the arrow. And so once again, we're going to take our hand off the mouse and we're going to type in 30. So now we've got a 30 by 30 cube. Uh, we can rotate it around if you go down to the bottom. To get out of the move tools or these bottom tools, you hit escape once. And that's the common theme with Fusion 360 is if you ever get to where you don't want to do or something's not working, then just tap the escape button. Uh, if you want to go back home, you go up to the top right and you hit the home. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw on that surface. So we're going to the top left. We're going to click on one of the surfaces. We could click on any one of them, but we want it to highlight before we click on it. And we are draw something like a circle. So... If I was to hover on the side, you have things happening. So if you see right here, there's a, a blue triangle showing up. And when I go across, it holds that blue triangle. And we can also find the center of the circle that way. So by just hovering and so it kind of clicks there. And this circle will be, I don't know, 20 mils. And so then we can finish again and we've got a chance to have a circle and we're going to extrude. So extrude is very common. We could just grab it and extrude outwards. If you wanted to kind of make a Lego idea, you could blow through it. You can go over to your panel here and you've got some options. Uh, you can change distance. So it's negative 68 millimeters, but I can change that to all the way through your object. Now, if you remember, that's 30 millimeters, so I could have typed in 30 millimeters. And you can see that there's a bunch of options here. So we're going to choose cut. And so we've got a shape that basically has got uh, through, through the middle. Um, so now the next thing would be to create another uh, shape on maybe another side. So we went up and we um, hit the green X. Green, I can go back in time if I want to. So it was the green plus. I would probably want to go home or I can go forward. And um, 
So I have pretty good faith that I'm on the right side that I want. So under the Create menu, you've got a whole bunch of options. We've tried Circle already. We've tried Rectangle. So we could try Arc, or we'll go, actually we'll go to Polygon. So when you go to Polygon, we got some Circumscribed, we've got Inscribed, and um, an Edge version. So I'm going to choose the top one, and you can too. So I'm going to go maybe not right in the middle. So our default is 6. If I hit Tab, I can go in and change it. So if I hit 3, we've got a triangle. 4 would be um, a rectangle or a square. Uh, so let's put a triangle in. So now I didn't click on anything, so I can actually do a second triangle if I don't lose my tool. If I hit escape, I can get out of that tool and I can start moving it around. It seems to be anchored in one place. So then if I hit finish uh, and home, I've got a triangle shape. Now it ended up on the far side and that's one of the things that will confuse you sometimes is that it might not be where you think it was going to be depending on where you selected the box. So this one, uh, we're going to extrude outward. And I can have a distance. Uh, I can type that in if I want, or I can just accept that. And then you can choose a join, or you can choose new body. If you choose new body, you actually will have a triangle that's two mil millimeters thick. And it will be a separate item, but if you go join, it'll actually part, be part of this whole body here. Uh, if I was going to choose another face, so I went again to the green plus, I want to check, I could draw on that triangle itself, and uh, I could choose a shape, so we could put a, let's put a slot there. So if I put a slot in, now for slots, it's three clicks, one for the initial spot, second one for the end spot and then this would be the diameter or the radiuses of the circles i think it's the diameter of the circles so we could type a value in if we wanted to and we can hit enter and so now when we finish our sketch we have the slot and we can extrude that as well and we just went one millimeters so we've got those two shapes now what if we wanted a pattern? So let's say that we want to create another um, on this third side and we want to have an object and create a pattern. So if we want, uh, what would be a good pattern? Let's go with uh, just a plain rectangle. We use the center rectangle. You notice that I can select it from the top menu. I don't have to come over here. And I can just put my rectangle here I want to make a circular pattern, so I'm going to type, uh, let's go with 2.5. I'm going to hit tab to go over to the other one, 2.5, I'm going to hit enter. And so now I've got my shape. I want to go to circular pattern, and I'm going to choose the object that I want. I don't have to choose the whole rectangle, but... Uh, and then your center point. So now in this case, it's going to be the origin of the whole drawing or uh, part, but you could put in a point if you wanted to. You can change the number. So we can go to seven if we want. You can choose full or you can use partial. If you use partial, then you can sort of have a, a degree of what you want. And it says the angle here. You could type in anything you wanted. If you go full, you could have some that are suppressed, so you don't have to have all of them. You can just uncheck them and then, or recheck them. Okay, so that is that diagram finished. So we can go to finish diagram or sketch, and we've got that. And now we can extrude it two ways. You could select the face and you could pull it out or push it in. Um, you can go over here and deselect it. When you're selecting an object that you want, you if you make a mistake and click on the background, you can just click on it again and it goes away. Okay, and then it's coming up with the distance. If you get rid of the negative, just put in three, then it'll come outwards. Uh, negative just means the opposite direction. You can have tapers. So let's say if we added a 20 degree taper on there, you could have it flare out if you do a negative, what happens? It flares in. 
um, or you could just go back to zero and we can click OK. So that is a circular pattern and if we were to show you, uh, let's go with another type of pattern. If you ever get lost, just hit escape and home and it'll get you back to where you started from. So I'm going to choose the last side and this time I'm going to do a rectangular pattern. So just to be hilarious, I will choose a circle and that's going to be my starting point. And now I can just go to rectangular pattern and I can select the object. Now there's two objects here. There's the center and there's the outside. You want to select the outside and then you can just drag it in which direction you want using these arrows. You don't have to go in both directions. You could just go in one and each one of them has uh, increasing or decreasing uh, quantity available to it. So we've got five in one direction and we'll go four in the other direction and there's a whole bunch of different variables here. So now we can finish our sketch Turn it sideways. You'll notice that I didn't click home. I could just use this orbit. And there's two ones. There's a constrained orbit and there's a free orbit. I typically use the free one. So that one is my best friend, I guess. And then there's the pan if you wanted to just move it around. Okay, so now we're going to use, we hit escape to get out of my move tool. And now I'm going to hit extrude. And I'm just gonna go and select all the circles. Sometimes you want to make your design in such a fashion that you don't have to select a million different objects uh, because it gets tedious if you have a whole bunch of them. And if you plan ahead, you could just do it so that you select the background and not the object itself. And just to be different, we'll go into the object and we'll click OK. And the last thing we'll do is we'll add text to it. So we're going to create another sketch on the final side and we're going to throw some text on there. So text is a, a little different. It wants you to say where it's going to be and you want to select a box. So the default text is huge. So let's go with uh, six maybe. So six will get on the screen. Typically we're going to uh, uh, put our name on it and you have choice of font. You can make it bold, you can make it italicized, uh, you can change the font even more, um, you can make it center aligned uh, and or in the middle. And then when you click OK, actually I'm gonna make it slightly smaller. And then click OK. So now because I didn't anchor it on anywhere, I can move it around how I want. Um, if you would have clicked on the center when you made your box, you might have had more trouble moving your text. So when we finish it, sometimes text is hard to select, but we typically, if we're going to print something out, we're going to make the text either come out a millimeter or go in. I think going in would be probably safer, but depends on your design. So this is our first lesson. And just to review, we've done um, rectangular pattern on the side, circular pattern here. We've made a circle on the top and extruded it through. We've used the polygon shape. Uh, we set it to three sides, so it's a triangle, and we used the slot. Okay, so that's where we're gonna stop for this lesson. So good luck, have fun.